Um, yeah, I feel like it's a bit of an anti-climax <laughs> um, going last. I mean, we've had so many talented people here. We've had so many people do some amazing things. I don't have that many skills. I can't create different sounds with my voice by pressing different buttons. But what I can do um, is poetry. I'm a spoken word artist. Last year was a bit difficult for me, if I'm honest, because I was told to talk about democracy. Um, I'm not too engaged when it comes to political terms like that. And it's difficult to find words that rhyme with democracy, actually. Like, <laughs> you know, you have, you know, it's very difficult. Democracy, biography, a couple of other ographies which they wouldn't have approved of in Parliament. <laughs> you guys got, <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble for that. Um, yeah, so um, this year they said I could discuss and talk about leadership. And I realized that I actually don't know that much about leadership as a whole. So everything I'm going to say is my opinion on what I think leadership should be. It will be relevant to some of you, may not be relevant to some of you, but please don't come up to me afterwards and give me political statements and manifestos and tell me what's right and what's wrong. I'm just stating my opinion. That's what I do as an artist. Um, it's called Follow the Leader. Oh, and I have to explain, spoken word is basically like poetry, yeah. Or if you want to sound more cool, it's more like rap. But. Um, now, I don't know that much about leadership. All I know is that as kids, we all wanted to be the Red Ranger. Now, if you don't understand the significance of being the Red Ranger, I feel very sorry for you. Because it means you were either born way too late to appreciate the birth of one of the world's greatest legacies, or you were born way too early to be born in one of the world's greatest centuries. But for those of you who don't know, being the Red Ranger meant that you were part of an esteemed group of individuals known as the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Now, as kids, we wanted to be the Red Ranger, because not being the Red Ranger not only meant that you got the biggest sword, the biggest sword, and got to scream, it's morphing time, before every fight, but it also meant that you were the leader of the group. Now, as kids, we all wanted to be the Red Ranger. Well, actually, I wanted to be the Black Ranger for obvious reasons, but, <laughs> but can we agree that as kids, we were unafraid to be Power Rangers, heroes, leaders. As a matter of fact, we were eager to be anything more than meagre. So can we then agree that mediocrity, being average, is something that we learn? Not learn, but are taught. Maybe Socrates can expand more on this thought. What is leadership? He defined it as the challenge to be something more than average. Something we were willing to accept before life put us in the deep end. Because as we get older, it then starts to deepen. Most of us only want to be front in line to the pub or the club on the weekend. But is that our fault? Because from when I was young, I was told, Sully, one day you're going to have to lead your own life. But this was then preceded by me being taught how to follow. In school, I learned to follow the rules. The first game we ever learned to play was follow the leader. I always had to make sure I understood the following. My boss always made sure I followed up on everything. My parents taught me how to follow the system, follow religion, follow tradition. And then they said they'll kill me if I ever followed in their footsteps. But the severity of this never really hit home because even in my favorite TV show, Dorothy told me to follow the yellow brick road. Ironically, one thing I was never taught to follow was my heart. It was like follow fashion before you follow passion. So you can understand why my mum seemed bitter when I told her I wanted to be in a band, especially as I explained that I wanted to be the lead singer. Also, I couldn't sing. But, but the world doesn't need new leaders because leaders come and go like common colds. If you ask me, the next leader should be a community guided by a common goal, one which everyone can contribute, young and old. I never understood why you had to be 18 to vote, because that's way too late to clean up the mess made by the previous generation. The world doesn't need new leaders. 
The world needs new ideas. Ideas that tell me I don't have to walk like that or talk like this, that me and you can be different. Because listen to this, and this is wisdom. People die, but ideas live forever. Because great ideas are all the greatest leaders ever were. If you look at it, Abraham Lincoln, equality. Julius Caesar, strength. Mahatma Gandhi, peace. Nelson Mandela, unity. Princess Diana, empathy. Mother Teresa, compassion. And I'm not saying I agree with all their actions, but I agree with the ideas. Maybe the scariest reality is that we are all leaders because we all have ideas, but somewhere in between our adult lives and nine to fives, we're pacified to believe that we're satisfied. When deep down inside you, 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 there's a Red Ranger, fully suited up, ready to swing at whatever life throws up. Don't get distracted by the noise the world throws to blind you, because deep down, there is a voice inside you, wondering why you haven't spoken to it in years, because you know what I realize? We don't always get wiser with age. Society just breeds us to forget or remember things that we already were, knew were true in the first place. There's not that much more I need to say. Just that you be red tomorrow and let me be green today. And we can change the world either way. As long as we're unafraid to make mistakes and keen to play. And then you can see, as long as we stop looking for others to lead the way, that creating a better world is a piece of cake. We don't need leaders, we need ideas. Thank you very much.